Sigma Tiger news, hot, juicy, beefy news all up in your grill. What do we got? A weed workout? Interesting. Too fat to fly. Oh no, we've been waiting for this one. Uh, racist robots. Well, I wonder what color they are. An alien compound exposed. And you're here with the Sigma Tiger, and this is Sigma Tiger News. And we are getting verified on Twitter. We're going to get these shorts popping. We're going to be on TikTok. We're going to be live streaming on all those platforms. So guess what? Sigma Tiger's here to stay. So you better get used to it. Let's go ahead. Even though they're trying to ban me all over the gaff. Let's go ahead and dive in. What's going on? Era of unquestioned and unchallenged climate change claims is over. New studies undercut the scientifically empty warming narrative, says astrophysicist and aerospace engineer. Leading voices in the climate science community are in an uproar as their warming hypothesis is coming under fresh assault by new scientific papers. The authors of the papers are being attacked and say that activist scientists threatened by the new findings are aggressively conducting an orchestrated disinformation campaign to discredit the papers and the scientific reputation of the authors. Indeed, from insults on social media and furious blog posts to Freedom of Information Act requests demanding emails from a journal editor and federal scientists, the controversy is getting heated. Several scientists who spoke with the Epoch Times expressed shock at the tactics used against those who whose latest research is casting renewed doubts on the official climate narrative. William Happer, Princeton Professor Emeritus of Physics and former climate advisor to President Donald Trump, wasn't surprised by the response of the new findings. Of course, the climate cult will be dismissive of any information, no matter how scientifically correct that is politically incorrect, he told the Epoch Times, noting that the new findings made important and valid points. The reason that climate activists are so upset is that the findings of the newspapers, a trio of peer-reviewed studies by astrophysicist Willie Soon and dozens of other scientists from around the world, are casting further doubt on the narrative of man-made global warming. The papers are also fueling even more public skepticisms about the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, which the authors say ignores the facts as well as climate science more generally. The rhetoric employed by taxpayer-funded scientists with a vested interest in the climate change narrative to attack the new research was profoundly unscientific, multiple scientists told the Epoch Times. So yeah, they're attacking character, they're attacking uh, uh, with ad hominem. Um, yeah, it's just a failed attempt to discredit. Uh, Mr. Mann, famous for his now widely ridiculed hockey stick graph purporting to show massive man-made warming, also described the editor of the journal Climate as a denier clown. Uh, Gareth S. Jones, a senior scientist at the UK Met Office, ridiculed the new studies as nonsense while smearing the journal's publisher for supposedly being popular with the science denial community. So, th without an attempt to, to discredit the actual evidence, they attempt to discredit the individual or the, uh, the publisher. Mr. Jones also denounced the guest editor of Climate Special Issue, Ned Nikoloff, for having a bit of a reputation, so much so that other climate contrarians uh, distanced themselves from him. Mr. Nikoloff authored an earlier paper arguing that atmospheric pressure, not greenhouse gases, played a primary role in the temperatures on Earth and on other celestial bodies. Also chiming in to attack the new papers and the scientists behind them was Gavin Schmidt, director of the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies, who's using a, a FOIA request to demand all of Mr. Nikoloff's emails with relevant scientists. Mr. Schmidt mocked Green, uh, Greenpeace co-founder Patrick Moore, one of the authors saying on X that there was uh, more expletive going around before posting a highly edited version of Mr. Moore's post on social media. The only point of this paper, which every climate denier and their dog has jumped onto, is to launder dirty science into a clean, made-for-fox meme Mr. Schmidt wrote on X before publishing a more detailed rebuttal on his blog, Real Climate. Yeah, so here's the deal, okay? So there's opposing arguments, and uh, because a certain group that has access to media is pushing a certain narrative, their narrative, what they believe, they're uh, coming up with evidence that seems to be like contrary to them. And instead of looking at it and saying, okay, well, like, let's like, you know, objectively look at this 
what they're providing. They're just like, ah, you guys are dumb. You're losers. You're part of the fringe. So, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't look good. Just like uh, what's happening with Trump. Whether or not you believe he committed insurrection on January 6th, he's not charged with insurrection. So that's how you know he didn't do it because they can't charge him with them. They can't prove it. There's no evidence. So, you know, it's all about looking at the evidence objectively and same with climate. It's the whole thing. It's just like, look at it. What does it say? And talk about it. Don't use ad hominem as a logical argument because it's a fail. And let's move right ahead. Running sober versus high, how weed affects your workout. Well, who would have guessed that smoking, you know, maybe they're vaping, maybe they're eating edibles, I don't know, but uh, THC and, uh, and running. People smoke cannabis for a variety of reasons, including for pleasure and to unwind. Now new research has found another benefit. Getting high can make exercise more enjoyable. The study included more than three dozen runners who were experienced cannabis users. When they smoked or vaped marijuana before exercising on a treadmill, they enjoyed their running experience more with greater sense of that euphoric runner's high compared with when they ran sober. The notion of weed smokers as exercisers defies stereotypes. Many people associate marijuana use with laziness and a lack of motivation, but past research has suggested that many frequent users of cannabis also happen to be people who frequently exercise. Angela D. Bryan, a professor of psychology in neuroscience at University of Colorado Boulder, said her team initially began studying the issue because they wanted to understand how the legalization of cannabis would affect public health. At the time, they theorized that legalization might worsen the obesity epidemic in the United States. But initial research suggested cannabis use might be more active than expected. Cannabis users, sorry. The team gathered information using surveys of marijuana users and found that many of those who responded believed marijuana motivated them to be more physically active and that it not only increased their enjoyment while working out, it also enhanced their recovery. So there you have it. Uh, weed users uh, or people who were using weed were asked, like, hey, you know, do you enjoy exercise when you do weed? And they're like, oh, yeah, totally. I wonder what the question would have been. is like, what other things do you enjoy while you're uh, high on marijuana? And I bet you the answer would be uh, everything they ask, unless it was something terrible to begin with. So there it is. Uh, apparently, if you uh, smoke weed and run, you feel great. So go ahead and try it if it's legal where you live. Airline announces it will now weigh passengers as well as their carry-on luggage. An airline has announced it will begin weighing passengers with the carry-on luggage in order to better estimate the plane's weight before takeoff. Yeah, well, that's part of it, you know what I mean? The average weight of a human is uh, fluctuating, and especially in different areas of the world, different states even. So how can uh, they safely fly these airplanes? Because a weight check is number one. How much fuel is on there? If they miscalculate that then uh, this plane is not going to fly properly and it could crash. So, you know, before you get all wound up about them being uh, fat phobic or fat shaming, they're just trying to make sure that everyone survives the ride. More than 500 volunteer customers have participated in the weigh-ins. Fin Air, which services the UK with budget flights to and from Finland, noted in statement airlines work out the weight of the plane, its interior and passengers on board to balance the flight and make for safe transit. So there you go. Um, airlines may use average weights provided by the aviation authority assumed to be 88 kilograms to collect their own data it said yeah so there it is the average weight of a human is 88 kilograms uh, per flying uh, standards there you have it Colorado decriminalized five psychedelics but what exactly does that mean it's not a crime sorry to possess use grow or share certain substances with the law's gray areas so what do we have we have uh, psilocybin Silosin, dimethyltryptamine, DMT, ibogaine, and mescaline for personal use. Interesting. So uh, mushrooms, magic mushrooms, uh, DMT, which is uh, something that's secreted during dreams and death, I believe, and also found in like every organic uh, thing on earth in different degrees. Uh, ibogaine, I believe, was used as a therapy for addicts. Uh, mescaline, of course, uh, coming from a cactus, like, you know, peyote, I believe. Yeah, so these things can get you tripping in Colorado. Uh, of course, education and guidance is very important. So if you do live in Colorado, be careful, because uh, this stuff could be anywhere. According to the statute, anyone over 21 who grows, manufactures, uses, possesses, or shares a personal amount of the aforementioned substances is not breaking state or local laws. One exception is ibogaine, which can't be shared differs from a measure that passed in 2019 when Denver became the first city to effectively decriminalize psilocybin. 
so there you go. If you want to uh, trip, go ahead down to Colorado. $3 for a single McDonald's hash brown. Are you kidding me? Well, an Egg McMuffin was um, $7 the other day. Two Egg McMuffins and a McGriddle cost one gentleman $21. And now it's $3 for a single hash brown. And on TikTok, you see the picture here. Uh, the gentleman has a potato and a hash brown, just for reference. And I can guarantee you there is probably a teaspoon of, or maybe two tablespoons of potato in that uh, hash brown. Well, McDonald's is uh, suffering from weaker than expected sales at its U.S. stores. Eating at home has become more affordable. Uh, so maybe they need to reduce the prices when you go pay $10 for a hamburger when it's supposed to be fast food and it's still crap. What are you going to do? Um, yeah, so and just another reason to avoid McDonald's. Uh, robot racism. What's going on here? Pittsburgh professor sounds the alarm over interacting with white robots. Okay, hang on a minute. I didn't know robots were capable of racism unless they're programmed that way. Are we missing something? Uh, in today's academic environment, there often seems to be a race to racialize common practices of terminology. Absolutely. Publications clamor for such articles and discovering another hidden racist element in society can bring ad academic accolades. However, others have already staked out many such areas such as mathematics, astrophysics, statistics, meritocracy, Climate change, dieting, tipping, skiing, chess, and organized pantries. These are all linked, uh, so I'm sure there's all examples of that. So the cultural imaginary uh, that enshrines robots is white, and in fact, usually female, stretches back to European antiquity, along with an explosion of novels and films at the height of industrial moder modern modernity. From the first mention of the world and word android, August Villiers de Ile la Dame, uh, 1886 novel, The Future Eve, the introduction of the word robot in Carol's Capix, Carl Carell Capix, 1920 play Rosam's Universal Robots, and the sexualized robot Maria in 1925 novel Metropolis by Thea von Harbour, the basis of her husband Fritz Lang's famous 1927 film with the same name. Fictional robots were quick to be feminized and made servile. Yeah, of course, because that was uh, the way it was back then. The piece, people who did all those works were women, so to associate it with that is different. Well, guess what? Is it all white men now that are doing all that work because of all these uh, feminist boss bitches? Uh, so here you go. There's a prototype of a humanoid robot optimist going for a walk. We've covered that many times. So the dude is like, hey, man, uh, black kids might have a problem uh, talking to these white robots. Okay. The development of sex robots will further reinforce relations of power that do not recognize both parties as human subjects. Yeah, so it's getting uh, pretty muddled here, right? Like, what's going to happen when all of these robots uh, uh, are in your homes and everywhere and, like, at the store? So anyway, uh, Patterson noted that the rods of socially assistive robotics and the dominance of robotics with white skin made of shiny white plastic as a result, he frets that black children, particularly those requiring assistance, could end up interacting with white robots. It's all part of the poverty of the engineered imaginary. So this guy's clown. Uh, get over it, bro. Uh, former Kappa sorority members sue after trans member fast track to leadership. All right, here we have it. Um, a Wyoming woman and five more from other states are suing the Kappa Kappa Gamma sorority for allegedly fast-tracking transgender alumnus into leadership positions, including national president. The complaint reads, most members remain unaware that the candidate is a man. There's an image of the individual, clearly uh, in disguise. A Wyoming woman and five others from other states have filed a fresh lawsuit against Kappa Kappa Gamma sorority, accusing it of fast-tracking a transgender alumnus member into leadership positions, including possible national president. The new lawsuit is different plaintiffs from one filed by six members of Kappa Kappa's Wyoming sorority chapter in the spring of 2023, but it forms a sequel to that earlier lawsuit because it also accuses sorority leadership council of violating the group's own bylaws by unilaterally redefining the word woman. Six sorority members who sued last year accused KKG of breaching its duty to them and violating its governing rules by in inducting a male-to-female transgender member, Artemis Langford. And we covered that story as well. Artemis Langford is a larger individual who the uh, biological females felt intimidated by, and he was transitioning, got uh, into the sorority um, through uh, not necessarily the normal means of being accepted. He was kind of just implanted there and uh there was anecdotal uh stories of him in the corner with erections while the girls changed uh very uh horrible things like that so anyway apparently uh 
they've gone ahead and uh, pushed through another individual. Uh, Najizia has applied for a leadership position ahead of the April 2024 election and could even become the next sorority president. The community alleges adding most members remain unaware that the candidate is a man. Uh, they don't identify him by name. Whatever. Anyway, so uh, yeah, that place is just like, you know, skirting the rules. And if you don't know, what's going on with Tucker Carlson? Well, he announced that uh, the NSA were spying on him when he was with Fox and he was going to do an interview uh, with Putin. And uh, then Fox uh, told him to get lost. And then he was like, okay, well, I'm on Twitter now. And Fox is trying to sue him. He's like, whatever, I'm going to go to Russia. And the cat got out of the bag, and Cat Turd has went ahead and posted a meme here because everyone's freaking out, saying Tucker is a Russian asset, he is non-American, he's a, an idiot, uh, whatever uh, ad hominem attack they can put on this guy, basically saying he's not a journalist for doing what he's doing uh, because he's interviewing Putin. And Cat Turd has gone ahead and posted this infographic of many other journalists, Barbara Walters, and... Um, that guy who sexually assaulted somebody, I can't remember his name, Larry King, also a controversial individual, uh, Megan Kelly, uh, and then Tucker Carlson, he's a treason, he's treasonous for interviewing him, just as many people have in the past, so what's going on here? Absolute joke. New York's illegal alien compounds exposed, stabbing drugs and death, muckraker.com. Uh, has obtained never-before-seen undercover footage from inside three of New York's secret illegal alien compounds at the ROW NYC Randalls Island and Floyd, Floyd Bennett Field. Uh, the footage includes conversations with security guards who speak of stabbings, drugs, deaths, and other events inside these facilities. It also includes interviews with numerous illegal aliens living inside these compounds as they wait for Medicaid and government-issued IDs. Here's an image of the large, uh, looks like a fabricated steel building. The ROW NYC is the fifth largest hotel in New York City and has recently been turned into a legal alien shelter. At max capacity, it holds around 5,000 people. It costs about $500 per person. Uh, on duty security guards can be seen talking about cases of domestic violence, suicide in the hotel. Other guard tells the story of a man who killed himself by jumping off the roof. Another committed suicide by cutting herself. Reynolds Island has lost community soccer field to a massive illegal alien compound. The max population of the facility is around 3,000. There's a large population of military-aged men from Africa. Some countries include Senegal, Morocco, Guinea, uh, Mauritania, Somalia. In the video, security guards at Randall speak of illegal aliens being caught with weapons. Marijuana revealed recent stabbing incidents at the facility. Also revealed that security guards are not allowed to search illegal aliens at the compound. So this is what's going on, people. There's a whole bunch of uh, immigrants, migrants, illegal uh, illegals entering the country. Um, God bless Mr. O'Keefe and OMG Media. It seems, I believe that's muckraker.com is his. Uh, he's going ahead and exposed this, and it's happening in your cities, and all of your money is going towards these people. Like I said, they're military-age men, and they're criminals coming from Venezuela. That's the migrant mob let out of prison. So what's going on? Another problem. Islam, theory versus experience. The gulf between understanding Islam and theory and in practice is wide and telling based on the findings of a recent study what Western people think of Islam when relying on secondhand information from the powers that be, the media, the political elite, etc., is vastly different from what they think of Islam after personally experiencing. According to the report, 2009 public issue investigated for the first time in Greece the attitudes of Greeks towards Islam, the social perceptions of the concepts and symbols associated with the Islamic religion, the degree of knowledge and familiarity of citizens with the Islamic tradition, as well as the existing social beliefs regarding Islam West and Islam Greece relations. The study found a dramatic shift of opinion among Greeks between 2009 and uh, 2023, seven years after a large Muslim migrant population first began landing in or passing through Greece in 2016. After experiencing Islam firsthand, Greek public opinion treats the Muslim world clearly more negatively and even hostilely, the report found. For example, in 2009, uh, more than 5 out of 10 Greeks held a neutral attitude towards traditional concepts and symbols of the Islamic world, stating that they have neither a positive nor negative impression of the words associated with Islam. Beginning with the word Islam itself, if only 23% of Greeks surveyed associated that word with negative feelings in 2029, by 2023 that number had more than doubled. Now, 59% of Greeks negatively associate the word Islam. Some words, including Arabs, Muslims, Quran, Prophet Muhammad, and Mosque, also hold more negative connotations for Greeks. So what this would be considered in the mainstream media is Islamophobia, right? But why? These are first-hand experiences of people. 
Uh, Muslim migrants ransacked and transformed another church into their personal toilet. The smell inside is unbearable, said a local of what was once St. Catherine Church in Moriah, a small town on the island of Lesovo, uh, which was overwhelmed migrants who arrived by Turkey. The metropol metropolitan uh, of uh, Mytilene is aware of the situation in the area. Nevertheless, he does not wish to deal with it for his own reasons. So there's a church on fire. There's a bunch of churches on fire in Canada as well. Uh, what's happening? Public opinion towards Islam is negatively shifting. These changes are not as pronounced as might be expected, underscoring the power of generations worth of indoctrination. In other words, abstract theory enshrined by the notion of Islam is that otherwise it's forever misunderstood religion of peace, etc. is still having an influence. The recent poll found, for example, that the percentage of citizens who accept that there is an Islamic danger has increased from 27% uh, to 39% today, plus 12%. So the argument here is... Um, People were fed a whole bunch of information, like don't be Islamophobic, you know, Islam is cool, Islam is great, Islam is nice, Muslims are great people and they're nice people, and most of them are, most people in general are, but there's also people who are, are crazy for any number of reasons, but when you have something like the Quran that explicitly states to kill people uh, who leave the religion, or infidels who uh, can be like broadly stroked as anyone who's not a uh, Muslim, should die and people are fanatically taking that like you know the muslim extremists yeah so it's a problem i don't see the christian book saying go murder anybody you know what i mean it says defend yourself thou shalt not murder you know it doesn't say like if someone's against you even jesus said like if you believe in me like your you know what i mean like your parents and friends and family and everyone's going to turn against you at some point and Check it out. Have a look around. Because it's happening. Boom. U.S. strike in Baghdad kills Iranian-backed militia commander. We've been following this in the Red Sea. Not going to get into all of the details of it. But it's 11.55. Now we got five minutes till World War III. And uh, here's the aftermath of a drone strike. U.S. Special Operations retaliatory drone strike in the Iraqi capital Wednesday killed a senior leader of a militia that U.S. officials blamed for recent attacks on American personnel. Pentagon said, following up on a President Biden's promise that a response to a slew of attacks by Shiite militias would continue. So, uh, if you don't know, of course, Houthis trying to shoot down um, or shoot at Red Sea assets, UK uh, commercial, uh, Chinese, potentially American military, Pakistan, Iran shooting at militant groups, Hezbollah obviously uh, trying to shoot at uh, Israeli um assets and then u.s go ahead and start bombing in iraq iraq went to the uh the court system uh the u.n potentially and was like hey listen like this should stop what's going on and the u.s is like uh well you know we're gonna keep doing it the security service an aggression said it violated iraqi sovereignty yeah we covered this yesterday uh america is the devil they're stating so they're all upset of course that america's still bombing iraq and there you have it sigma tiger check out twitter and uh, get verified or get your information from a real verified news source because uh, we're waiting for that blue check mark now go ahead check out tiktok at sigma tiger news at sigma tiger trade for all your financials sigma tiger signing out